Allison, we'll start with you. It's the last period of the day at Sarah Banks, and 6th, 7th, and 8th graders are filling the halls of this Wald Lake Middle School. But not all of them are from Wald Lake. We have nine municipalities that send their, their children here to Wald Lake schools. So the Wald Lake District also includes students from Wixom, Wolverine Lake, West Bloomfield, Novi, Farmington Hills, White Lake, Orchard Lake, and Commerce. Total enrollment? about 15,600. I do know we were the first consolidated school district in the state back in 1922, and we have expanded since then quite a bit, um, but it works well for us. One example, a larger district will buy more computers, so they may be able to get them at a discount. There's leverage. So we're able to leverage our purchases of technology, our leverage, or we're able to leverage our purchase of, of textbooks, of, of oil and gas and resources. And educational options like advanced placement classes and foreign languages are more likely to be available. The, the more students you have, the more opportunities there are for, for our students. That's one of the reasons Warren Mayor and former educator Jim Fouts says with six districts in his city, it's time for consolidation. I don't think you need six superintendents of schools and scores and scores, I don't know, 20, 30, 100 assistant superintendents of schools. I think at some point the schools need to consolidate uh, for efficiency. One district with nine cities, one city with six districts, how did that happen? It all began in the 1800s when school districts were drawn around farm boundaries, not cities. That's how the Clarenceville School District ended up right in the middle of Livonia. The settlers decided there was a need for school, for education for their students, and that was the beginning of, of our school district. And the city of Livonia just grew around them. Clarenceville has 1,800 students and covers parts of Livonia, Redford, and Farmington Hills. And even though it's located in Wayne County, it's considered an Oakland County district because it once had a school in Farmington Hills. Last year, a Michigan State University study claimed taxpayers could save $612 million by consolidating not just small districts like Clarenceville, but all the schools in each county into one district. But researchers at the Mackinac Center for Public Policy say that simply isn't the case. What we found is that there's an optimal size district of about 2,900 students when it comes to being fiscally efficient. And um, there are uh, more savings to be had from breaking up the districts that are larger than that um, than there are by consolidating the districts that uh, would, would fit together to form about a, a 2,900 student district. Instead of consolidating districts, consolidating services may be a better way to go. I mean, as bureaucracies grow larger, um, they don't necessarily grow more efficient, and, and school districts are not exempt from that rule. In Clarenceville, consolidation is nothing new. Consolidation of services, privatization, outsourcing, we've done that. And they're operating with about $3 million in their equity fund. We know that we will be all right for next year, even though, you know, we will be doing some cuts, just like every other school district. But... You know, the following year, it, it will be very difficult. One question that remains unanswered, if proposed cuts to school funding go through, will small districts or larger ones be better able to weather the storm?